Uh, delighted to say we now have Frankie Dolan joined us uh, of, of St. Bridges. Frankie, how are things with you? Good, Shane. You're catching me at that time, but... <laughs> I, I believe you're, you're, dri you're driving the post van, are you? I am, yeah. Uh, very busy at the moment with the lead up to Christmas, yeah. So, great crack. Yeah, you're probably kind of over and back to the depot, picking up all sorts of stuff, dropping off Santa's presents. Just it's early, actually, to be dropping them off. Uh, it's been dropped off the last few weeks, Shane, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, well, it's probably good for business that we're so busy, but uh, not good for the body. And and how are things with you? Like, I mean, obviously, it's a huge weekend for St. Bridget's coming up against Cara Finn in the, in the club final in Connacht. You've been there before. You know what it's like. Has it captured the imagination locally? Well, I'm living in Roscommon Town now, Shane, the last 20 years. So um, I would imagine up in Kiltoom, yeah, it's uh, starting to liven up a bit. I suppose there's a bit of rivalry, rivalry there over the last uh, the last few years. So um, I'm sure on Sunday, it'll be good it'll be good crack in, in High Park on Sunday with Corfin coming to town. And it uh, should be a good crowd there as well. And should be good banter in the terrace, I'd imagine. And like Corfin have obviously been here before. They won those three in a row All Ireland titles. I suppose everybody in Connacht was sick of the sight of them there for a while. The team has changed a little bit, but they've added some real quality. A couple of those corner forwards look very tasty. They they, they seem to have refreshed where they needed to. They have, yeah. Kevin Johnson came in there and he's done a good job over the last few years. And they won a couple of leagues and they won the the county final this year. And it was actually at the final or the county final against Mike Cullen. And um, Mike Cullen, I know we're missing Sean Kelly that day, but um, Cora Finn were full value for the money. They were six points up going into injury time and played the better football. Um, and he's a nice blend of youth and experience there. And, uh, you know, they seem, to be, they seem to be clicking now as Cora Finn would normally do come this time of the year. And that could be a worry for Bridges on Sunday. But uh, in saying that, I'd expect Bridges to um, uh, have a really really top performance they'll need a really top performance probably play the best to have this year to try and top the curve in um, but uh, it should be an intriguing game looking forward to it yeah and I suppose St. Bridget's semi-final against um, Mohill some people would have been expecting it to be a routine enough win but it was one seven to eight points like they like Bridget's really had to work all the way to get that victory they did, Shane. It, it probably didn't help the, the conditions that day in Hyde Park uh, was, was wet it was very breezy uh, Eamon O'Hara side Mohal to set up very defensively. They got a lot, a lot of bodies behind the ball, and Bridget's struggled a lot to break it down. Uh, but I suppose one thing you, you'd have to give credit to Mohal for the, I suppose, the defensive shape that they had of a big, strong physical team. Uh, whereas Bridget's probably liked the drier ground, the drier ball, and a nice, nice day to play football. So that probably didn't help Bridget's either. But um, it probably won't do them any harm either. They had this, the, the quarterfinal against Strand Hill. It was it was more or less like a challenge game. And whereas the last day, they had to dig deep. And Ben O'Carr showed his bit of quality in the second half to drag Bridges over the line. And I'd expect the game on Sunday uh, to be a really good game. I'd expect the two teams to be going at it. Bridges probably might be a little bit more defensive than the probably teams that I would have played with over the years. Um, but I'd like to think Bridges would go at the game a bit more than they did against Mohal. Uh, if they don't, I just think Cora Finn will have too much for them. I just think Bridges need to ask a lot of questions and uh, take the handbrake off as such and, and uh, you know, test Cora Finn and see what they really like defensively. And when you saw Brian Stack going down in that game against Strand Hill, were you fearing the worst? He, of course, came back just during injury time the last day out. You must have been fearing the worst when you saw him going down. Yeah, it's not like Stacky. Uh, it's, it's very seldom that he is injured, Shane. Um, now, I know he hasn't done a lot the last couple of weeks. He came on for two or three minutes against Mohal, um, where they needed him. But I would I would imagine that he should be OK for Sunday. Uh, Bridges would definitely need a player of his calibre and experience in that full back line probably Marshall, maybe the likes of Gary Sice or Jack McCabe or someone like that. So if he was to be missing, it would it would be a serious, serious loss for Bridges. And I couldn't see how they'll how they'll beat Cora Finn. But if if Brian is playing, it definitely gives us a chance. He he marshals the defence very well. He's been playing really good football uh with the club and county over the last two years. So uh hopefully he'd be hopefully he'd be fit Shane. We 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 need him fit and um 
it'll make it'll make it more intriguing to say if he is fit. You know what I mean? That you know that the best players for both teams are on the pitch on Sunday, and hopefully they live up to the expectation of games gone by. Yeah, for a spell, Carfin looked like they were going to just dismiss Ballina, and Ballina had their injury issues, of course. Uh, Parik O'Hora wasn't there. They had another player who went off early during the game. I just can't remember who it was off the top of my head. Jerk Hafferke, that's who it was. Jerk Hafferke, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you couldn't say that Balna were at 100%. And still in all, they came back and brought it very close during the second half. So, it's maybe not yet the Corrafin of old. So, do you feel like there are areas, and, and where do you think Bridges can get at Corrafin? Uh, they're definitely not the Corrafin of old. Like, uh, you know, you mightn't see a team like that again to, to win three All Irelands in a row. That was that was a superb team. Now they are coming again. Um, with the, with the, they've obviously brought in youth there, and that bit of experience is still there that they've had that got them to win All Ireland finals. So, um, where can Bridges maybe make hay? I think maybe around midfield. If Eddie Nolan and Shane Canan uh, can at least break even, I'd expect them to at least break even. They're two big men. They're two inter-county footballers. So uh, I think in around that area, that, that middle third is going to be crucial for Bridget's on Sunday. Breaking ball is going to be key. And getting probably faster ball into the likes of Bobby Nugent, Ben O'Carroll, Connor Hand, uh, Kieran Suger, these type of players. They, they're fast, pacey players. And the quicker Bridges can get ball into them, the better. But if it's slow, lethargic, you know, them players are going to get frustrated and eventually they'll end up coming out too far out the pitch to really do any damage. So I just think that's an area that uh, Bridges need to really try and get on top of. And if they can, you know, they'll have a chance. But if, if they don't, I think they'll struggle. Mm. OK, and like just to get a prediction in terms of this game, how do you see it going? Jesus, if I if I if I didn't say Bridget's, uh, I'd be shot on Sunday. But um, putting that, I I think with my head more than my heart here. I I just think Curra Finn might have that little bit too much on Sunday. Uh, they obviously bet Mike Cullen, who were one of the favourites for All Ireland. So uh, Curra Finn, I think, with the youngsters they've uh, brought into the side over the last few years and that experience to have to on the pitch and on the bench, they've a decent bench as well. In fairness, Curra Finn. I just think it might be a little bit too much for Bridget's on Sunday, but I hope I'm wrong, Shane. Mm. And, and beyond that, who do you think are the, the real favourites for the club All-Ireland? Obviously, Kill McCutter is still there. Um, they're playing in the playing Leicester final against Nays. I'd expect them to get over the line there. Uh, you have the Glen up north. I, I, I had a fancy for the Glen from the outside, from the outset. I, I still think they'll be there, thereabouts. They're just doing enough to get through. They're in the Ulster final. Uh, I don't know an awful lot of down south at the moment. Uh, Dingle um, and the team for Cork. Castle I can't think of it. Castle, Castle David. David. Yeah, like the two good sides, you know what I mean? But in saying that, like if Kerr Finn Bridges come out out of, out of Connacht, like Connacht football is, Connacht club football is always strong. Um, but my, I'm going to go from what I thought on the outside. I, I still fancy the Glen to uh, go a step further than, than they did last year and possibly win the club title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and can I ask you then about um, Ross Common and year one under Davy Burke? How do you think? How do you think they did? And there's been a bit of a turnover. The likes of Mark McHugh has gone. Some players are away to Australia. Some lads are back. Like, do, are you happy with where Ross Common are going? Yeah, well, uh, Ross Common, as we as you all know, like Ross Common doesn't have a big pick of players or clubs. We've only twelve senior clubs. Um, done reasonably okay last year. Um, we're still in Division One, which is probably key. Players want to be playing that that high level of football, league football especially. Uh, championship didn't go overly great. Draw, draw, draw with Dublin and Crow Park and um, not getting over the line against uh, Kildare and Cork. You know, it's disappointing. Um, wasn't what probably Davy Burke and his management team wanted. The way to finish the year, they definitely would have wanted to got to a quarter final. Um, so that in that respect, that was disappointing. They've lost a number of players um, for next year, which is not going to help the situation. Key players as well. I know Ronan Daly and Ulton Harney are supposedly coming back on board, uh, which will be a help. But Ulton hasn't been playing football the last year, so it'll be probably tough for him to get up to that level again. Ronan Daly definitely is a plus to get back. Um, so it'll be interesting to see wh what happens. You know, it's it's Division One football is is 
is going to be cutthroat for them this year. They possibly might struggle this year uh, with the players have lost. That's a worry for me. And obviously, Jerry McGowan and Mark McHugh not being involved this year, who were gone from the setup. Um, and Lar Wall has come in to replace uh, Jerry McGowan. Now, I don't know if he's replaced uh, Mark McHugh yet, so it'll be interesting to see who replaces Mark McHugh because uh, by what I hear on the, on the outside, they've done a lot of good work there uh, this year with the, with the team and really pushed them and had them in really good shape. So that'll be another interesting uh, scenario, I suppose, that'll come up over the next few weeks. Who's going to replace Mark McHugh? Mm. And, and how do you see, like, beyond Ross Common in terms of, like, the All-Ireland run next year? Like, Mickey Hart's after going to Derry, so we'll see how that pans out. But who, who do you... Do you see anyone being able to break in amongst, uh, I suppose, Derry, Kerry and Dublin? Um, Galway, maybe? Possibly Galway, yeah. Um, like, Galway definitely can be there, thereabouts. They were in the All-Ireland final two, two years ago or that, so... Um, outside, of, outside of them... I don't know if Jim McGuinness coming back into Donegal. I don't know whether they have the calibre of player to compete at all Ireland level. It's hard to know, but probably I, I probably only see the likes of Gaul the likes of Galway maybe outside of them three. It's 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 you know, I don't I don't think there's really anyone else really going to be contending. Possibly Mayo, you wouldn't know, but uh, it could be a long shot. Mm. I, I just wanted to ask you, did, would you have played much against Johnny Doyle over the years? Because this weekend he's with Allenwood and he's, you know, he's 45 years of age and he's going for a, a Leinster Intermediate Football Championship medal at, at midfield, no less. Quite an incredible uh, thing he's looking to do. Yeah, and credit, credit to him. I, I've seen a few of uh, the highlights of his games there and he's still doing the business. So he's not just a passenger on the team. He's still scoring. He's still dictating the play. You know, credit to Johnny Doyle. I, I would have played against him a couple of times, Shane, but it's a long time ago. But my last time playing against Johnny Johnny Doyle, I think it could have been 2003 in Port Leash when Roscommon played um, Kildare in the All-Ireland qualifiers that time. And he's probably as fit now as he was then. He's still in su super shape, whatever he's doing. So credit to him and, uh, you know, at that, that age to be competing at that level, you know, it'd be great for him to, uh, to add another medal to his to his uh, collection. Yeah, he, he's up against Scully Connell of Dublin this weekend. It, can yeah. I just ask you, are there, what, what are the most cherished memories you have from your playing days, whether it's Clover County or, you know, or playing with a college or whatever? Well, unfortunately, I was never in college, Shane. <laughs> I, I went straight from school to work. <laughs> um, but I suppose, uh, looking back, it probably would have to be winning the Club all Ireland with my club, St. Bridget's, uh, back in 2013. That definitely is the highlight of my career. Um, to be able to do it with your club, and like we were competing for a good few years, trying to get up to that level, and to be able to maintain it was credit to everybody involved players wise and you know I suppose wives and partners and the club to get behind to get behind it like that took probably 10 years in the making so um, and to get over the line that day in the club all Ireland uh, with the last kick of the game that law was uh, live long in the memory so that'd be probably my highlight of my career Shane yeah and uh, of course like that was the day when the man himself Shane Kern blindsided you with this do it still get part of you all the time <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time for Cake to pull a stunt like that, but um, he knew what he was doing that day. He knew <laughs> he, he wasn't as uh, as exhausted as some of us were on the field that day, so uh, he was very fresh in mind and body to know, to, to capture the moment, I suppose. He knew where the photographer was at the time. And of course, like the one time he did go for a burst out the field one day, should not the hamstring go on him? The hamstring in the back went, Shane. Yeah, he was carried off by by our great physio, Pat Regan. Uh, mm -hmm. that, was, that was in the kind of club final against Casabar back in 2014. Um, I think that was possibly could have been Cake's last game for Bridget's. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, the back went and the hamstrings went. Everton went. And <laughs> I suppose we, di we didn't do too bad to get the, the few years out of him that we did. And only for him in 2013, playing in goals, he probably wouldn't have won the All-Ireland. So, yeah. Uh, you know, he was he was he was some keeper now. In fairness to him, who's the best player you ever played with, skill wise? Skill wise, um, skill wise, uh, 
probably possibly Sen and Kilbride. Um, I didn't play a lot a lot of county with Senan, but I would have played a lot of club with him. And yeah, probably Senan is up there with probably the best best player I would have played with. Mm, lovely left foot on him, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he had a great left foot in him, and he and he he also had a right foot as well when he decided to use it. But uh, yeah, he probably be up there. He's Senan about six foot one, six foot two, and you know he could turn in a sixpence. Very intelligent footballer as well. And um, and a really top fella, really nice guy. On top of that, he's out living in Dubai at the moment. Oh, lovely! And is there any like who's the toughest player you ever came up against? And would anyone have ever used any unusual tactics on you to try and get into your head? <laughs> well, back when I was playing inter county, Shane, it was man for man, and you didn't have a lot of protection. Probably, like you saw, Marty Lockhart from Derry was a tough cookie. Um, Francie Bellew from Armagh and Cross McGlynn was another tough. Tough man. Um, uh, Shamey Moynihan was probably not really that tough, but he was a he could read the game really well. He was a you know he was a great footballer and he had plenty of pace. Um, Cahill Daly from Offaly, ex All Star as well. Uh, Cahill Daly was a tough tough cookie. Matthew Meehan from Galway. Um, I found him very hard to shake off. He was physically strong and he was very athletic. He'd be Michael's brother. Um, Decky's brother I found him to be a really tough cookie as well so probably four or five of them players but yeah, there's obviously I'm... more as well that I can't think of and uh, anyone particularly good at the mountain I'd probably give that award to probably Martin, Martin Cahill from Dublin um, we would have had a couple of battles back in the early noughties um, in Parnell Park especially <laughs> They got a little bit heated at the time, so yeah, probably probably Martin was up there with the with the mountain, all right. Yeah, he was good at that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, in terms of other great players you played alongside, and you know, not just skill wise, like who are some of the like the lads that you really just love playing with? Uh, I'd like to Francie Graham. Um, Francie would have started his career in in the forward line, in, and he ended up playing centre back for Scammon. Um, he he was a top player. He he, he could read the game and he it, he knew that he knew the ball the forwards wanted, which definitely helped us inside. So Francie Francie was up there, um, and I, I suppose playing Rayway Cup as well. Rayway Cup back in the years. Um, ja Fallon was Ja Fallon was a class act. Paul Joyce class act. Decky Meehan, Kieran McDonald, um. All them fellas, Kevin Walsh, like they were they were some superb footballers. Um. So, uh, Michael, Mike, Michael Donnell, and like Sean Old, the player, like all, all them lads. We would have played Railway Cup. We would have had rivalries over the years. We actually never won a Railway Cup, and we tried really hard, um, to win the Railway Cup back when we were playing. We it was a long time since Connacht won it, Shane, and we actually never could win it. And we tried, we tried and tried to win it. John Tobin was our manager. John O'Mahony was our manager, and. You know, it wasn't for the lack of trying. It was just we're coming up against some exceptional other teams, especially up up north. Ulster, Ulster had a serious Railway Cup team, and so did Leinster. So, yeah, but them them players really stood out, I suppose, when I was playing Railway Cup. They were they were Eamon O'Hara. They were they were class footballers. And you you mentioned Kieran McDonald there, of course, the Mayo icon. What was he like in the dressing? Was he a quiet guy? Because obviously he doesn't do many interviews. He did that one on RT there several years ago, and it was you know fascinating mm. enough. What was he like in the dressing room? Uh, very quiet. Well, to be honest, I can't really remember back back twenty twenty years ago in in a Rava Cup dressing room. But there wouldn't be an awful lot said, Shane. We didn't do a lot of training for. He might do an odd session, but Keir McDonald to me, he always done his talking on the pitch. Um, he had an outrageous left foot on him, and he could he could pick a pick a pass anywhere. He put it he put it on a sixpence for you. So uh, he's a very quiet guy. I actually done a little bit of work with him back in. Uh, twenty over twenty years ago, up in Dublin, we were working on the on the pipeline up in Santry, the waterworks. So um, he was a fine specimen of of a man back then. He was so fit, like he was, he was so strong. He was deceptive, deceptively strong. He might not look that tough, but but like he was so so strong. And he, you know, he was probably up there with one of the best I've ever played with. Mm. And before I let you go, uh, I can't but ask you about you know being a postman. What is the most unusual situation you've ended up in? Have you ever been cornered by a, a load of dogs or whatever? <laughs> um, 
the most unusual. I don't know if it's safe to say on this, Shane, but um, let me think now. I've oh, often been cornered by a dog. I've often been cornered by a dog. They've often got the steel toe cap as well. Um, yeah, it, it's that that would be probably about the height of it. It's, yeah, nowadays, you don't meet too many people out and about, to be honest with you. Um, most people are off working or whatever, or they're not at the house these days, but yeah, uh, off the top of my head, I'd say probably dogs, but there's probably one or two things there, but I probably can't really say. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, and one further thing, you had mentioned Francie Graham there a while ago. He was mm. Ross Common's most recent All-Star up until this year when it was won by Enda Smith. I mean, that that's a great reward for him because he's he's, he's been, I suppose, quietly excellent as far as like nationwide. You all know he's brilliant there in Ross Common, but maybe he hadn't got the appreciation beyond the county bounds. No, and he's a very committed guy. He's very down to earth lad. He's very, very, really top, top lad with with youngsters after matches and giving them time and all that type of thing, you know. And he's he puts his he, he puts a lot of work into it behind the scenes, and you know he was probably lucky enough to get it. You know what I mean? With the likes of Paul Mannion not getting in and Karma Costello and one or two more. So, but. It was great for him and it was definitely great for Roscommon as well. It was 2001 was the last time he got an All-Star. So with Francie Graham getting that. So it was probably long overdue. And, you know, it's good. It's great for him. He, he he puts a lot into it. And to get that little bit of reward, the season mightn't have ended the way he wanted to have ended. But to get that, you know, accolade for himself is down to probably all the hard work he's done over the last 9, 10, 12 years playing. OK, well, look, Frankie, you've been great with your time. Really appreciate you joining us and uh, enjoy the match on Sunday. Best of luck to the club. Thanks a million, Shane. Take care. All the best.